If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In part A, we are asked to calculate the potential energy at, of the ball at various heights. Now, we know that the potential energy, or more specifically gravitational potential energy, is equal to the mass of the ball times g times the height to which the ball has risen. Now there are three different heights given, so we're going to have to make three calculations for this gravitational potential energy. So let's set it up three times. We've simply color-coded things so that we can keep track depending on the different heights. So we'll plug in a height of 5 meters for the first one, 10 meters for the second one, and 18 meters for the third one. The value of g will be 9.8 for each, and then the mass is given as 3 kilograms. And after plugging in those three heights and computing these gravitational potential energies, you should obtain the following answers for part A. Notice the unit is in joules. So after we have these potential energies, we can move on to part B, which asks us to find the speed of the ball when it reaches these three heights. And to understand how to calculate that, we need to look at the conservation of mechanical energy. And this is going to tell us that the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy will equal the final kinetic energy plus the final gravitational potential energy. Now, the ball is thrown with an initial height of zero meters. So that means that its initial gravitational potential energy will actually be zero as well. For the rest of the energies, we can fill in the corresponding expression. So for kinetic energy, we have one half times the mass times the initial velocity squared, and that's going to equal one half times the mass times the final velocity squared plus mass times g times the final height. Now we are trying to find the final speed of the ball at these heights, so we want to solve this equation for Vf. One way to do that would be to multiply every term by 2, and if we do that then we're going to end up with mv initial squared equals mv final squared plus 2mgh final. We'll notice that the mass appears in all three terms, so we can actually eliminate it algebraically. We can then subtract this 2GHF over to the left-hand side. And then finally, we can take the square root of both sides so that we can isolate VF. And now that we have isolated VF, what we can do is plug in the initial velocity, which was given as 20 meters per second. G is 9.8, and then the final heights are given in the question to be 5, 10, and 18. So once again, we're going to have three calculations that we will set up right now. So we've gone ahead and plugged in the three heights in for the HF. We didn't color code it this time. And if we compute all three of these values, we're going to end up with about 17.4 meters per second for the first height, 14.3 for the next one, and then about 6.87 for the third height. So these three will be the correct final speeds of the ball at those three heights. Now for part C, in order to calculate the height of the ball when it reaches these three different speeds, we can once again use the conservation of energy, where we set the initial kinetic energy equal to the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. Once again, the initial kinetic energy can be expanded, as can the final kinetic energy and the final gravitational potential energy. As before, we'll multiply each term by 2. Since the mass appears in all three terms, we can divide each term by the mass to cancel it away. We can then subtract v final squared from both sides. And then finally, we can divide both sides by 2g so that it cancels out on the right-hand side. And then at this point, we can plug in all of the values. Remember, the initial velocity was 20. The final is going to take on these three different values, and then g is 9.8. So let's set up the three calculations. And if we carefully plug in all those expressions, we're going to get about 3.88. And this is going to be in meters since we're calculating a final height, and then 15.3, and then 19.1. So these will be the correct answers to part C. We can now move on to part D. And part D is a bit of a trick question. It seems like they're asking us for three different things. But we know that the mechanical energy of the ball is conserved throughout the motion. So the energy that it has when it's initially thrown upward is going to be the same energy when it reaches a speed of 10 meters per second, which will be the same energy that it will have when it reaches a height of 18 meters. 
This is kind of a crummy diagram, but what we're saying is that the mechanical energy will not change throughout the motion. So all we have to do is calculate the initial mechanical energy, and that's going to be the amount of energy present for all three parts of part D. Now, remember, initially, the only energy present was kinetic energy. So we can simply calculate the initial kinetic energy, which is 1 half m times the initial velocity squared. And so we can plug in the value of the mass, which is 3 kilograms. And then again, the initial velocity was 20 meters per second, and then we'll square that. And when we compute that, we get 600 joules. So that will be the correct answer for all three parts of part D, because once again, the total mechanical energy will not change. So whatever its initial value is will remain constant throughout the motion.